Disneyland is the happiest place on earth, assuming you let it. There's a lot of mental and honestly financial buy-in that goes along with that thought process. But if you can allow yourself to be bought over both figuratively and literally, then you embark on a LARP that is chock full of industrial grade magic at a premium price. Today we're going to be taking a look at four board games that correspond to four specific attractions within the Magic Kingdom. Love it or hate it, It's a Small World is iconic and it's recognized throughout the world for its very unique and repetitive song. Funko Game uses the physical layout and art direction of the ride to evoke the feeling that you are potentially on an eternal boat ride. The game has a 3D table presence with familiar scenes and characters. Little plastic boats work their way through each of the rooms in an attempt for teams to match character cards to it. It's a Small World is a very much a family ride. It's a Small World is also very much a children's game geared much more towards a younger audience. The game takes away some of the more competitive and cutthroat elements that you might see in a lot of mass market board games and makes them simpler, nicer. You draw cards and you match it to the characters in the room, potentially moving your boat or adjusting the, the whole ride itself so that you can see what you want to see. Players don't play individually, instead you're split up into two separate teams. And while the gameplay is extremely simple, the table presence is... Uh, unprecedented for a game of this weight and it's really interesting and really fun and it's a game that i can play with my young kids uh and a game that i don't hesitate to show off because it's pretty cool looking especially if you have that connection to it's a small world the haunted mansion is iconic and it's one of my favorite attractions at the disney parks so when funko announced that they were releasing a haunted mansion board game immediately interested Another set collection game, the Haunted Mansion game places you in the titular mansion face to face with some of the same ghosts and ghouls you meet in Disneyland. Again, borrowing heavily from the original art design, the game evokes an experience that is familiar to those that look on the source material with fondness. As with the ride, you have to watch out for hitchhiking ghosts, which can give you negative points, while at the same time try to collect different sets of ghoul cards throughout the mansion. There's also a pretty fun bidding mechanism in which you can potentially steal other cards from other players but it's this game of chicken and how many negative points are you willing to go into to steal a card from them. And regardless of if you're the winner or the loser of that bet, both people have to pay up. It's breezy, thematic, and most of all nostalgic for someone like me. Okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest here. I don't have any fancy B-roll of our next game because the last time I was in Disneyland, I didn't make it onto the Jungle Cruise ride, but that doesn't mean that I'm not a fan of it. Uh, but I don't have, you know what? I've got another boat ride that we went on, so I'll, I'll use that, just, to, just pretend. Pretend this is the uh, Jungle Cruise ride. And look, the Jungle Cruise ride has been serving up bad jokes since Disneyland opened, and this Ravensburger title, based on the attraction, continues that legacy. In this game, you are balancing between racing to the finish and prioritizing passengers and cargo on your very own Jungle River boat, a fairly simple concept that's easy to learn and cool to look at. The cards in the game present threats that you have to meet or succumb to, and each of the cards has one of those signature jokes that you'd be sure to hear from any one of the skippers on the Jungle Cruise ride. While the game maybe isn't overly compelling and it lacks some of the panache that you'd see in the other games on this list, it still is interesting, it offers a cool theme, uh, simple to learn mechanisms with, um, some fun resource management to it. The last game we're looking at today is the wildest game in the wilderness. That's right, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. This game immediately gives off Fireball Island vibes. It uses a 3D mountain and marble run to create an eye-catching centerpiece. The game is fast-paced and chaotic, but in a good way. The mines fill up with water, gold, and ore, and you have to use cards to move yourself around the board, get back to town to sell as much as you can, and then get back out into the mountains. It's fast, chaotic, finicky, yeah, that finicky, unfortunately, that marble run sometimes doesn't work quite as intended. But it's not a huge detriment to the game itself, and you can usually work with it with some finagling. These types of games are becoming less and less of an anomaly in the world of board games. Companies like Ravensburger, Funko Pop, Restoration Games, Buffalo Games, they bank on nostalgia being a big factor. And so I'm always cautious when going into anything that has a lot of intellectual property tied to it. Now, admittedly, I'm the type of person that would throw, you know, just thousands of dollars at a mouse. Um, so maybe my credibility is a little bit in question here. But even if I didn't have the nostalgia factor, which is there and it's strong, the fact that I have emotional and mental ties to each of these attractions that now I have a physical representation of in my collection, even with that, I would say if that was gone, at the very least, what you've got are compelling, interesting and different mass market games that are great for families and children. That's a pretty good place to start, regardless of if you even like Disneyland. Now, tack that onto the fact that every game on this list is 
very affordable, especially compared to a number of hobby games. I would say each one of these is well worth taking a look at, uh, especially so if you are at all interested in Disney or Disneyland. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I am more than willing and ready to create my own cardboard version of Disneyland, and I'm, I'm almost there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe. Uh, you can find me on social media, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all at Plumpy Thimble. Um, I would love to know what your favorite Disneyland attraction or Disney attraction is. And if you have one, if you've been to Disneyland, what your Disneyland was growing up. Because for me, we more often than not went to Knott's Berry Farm. That has shifted to where I still really enjoy Knott's Berry Farm, but I would prefer going to Disneyland. What is your relationship with theme parks? And what would you like to see in a board game based on those?